Hello, folks. It is Wednesday, February 22nd, Ash Wednesday. If you can't tell, I've got my ashes on my forehead um, and multiple services that we're doing today, this day that we do the imposition of ashes, perhaps the most important day in the Christian calendar. Yes, Easter, resurrection of Jesus, that's pretty important. Uh, Christmas, birth of Jesus, that's pretty important. But Ash Wednesday for us, the day in which we recognize, honor, um, and remember that uh, we are nothing apart from God, and that if our if if our sin uh, persists within us, unrepentant sin just uh, serves to separate us further from God, and that without the work of God and the work of Christ, then we could never be united with God. And that's what this day is about. Such an important day. Now, the uh, devotional today asks us every day this week to read uh, the transfiguration story from last Sunday. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them and his face shone like the sun and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for uh, one for Moses and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them. And from the cloud, a voice said, this is my son, the beloved with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, Tell no one about the vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. And so that's the transfiguration passage from last week. The question in the devotion today is this. Am I holding more tightly onto the quote-unquote high of a mountaintop experience than I am holding on to my faith and how I am meant to live? And so there's this, this push and pull. You know, I always think of this mountaintop experience uh, talking with the kids going to summer camp. You get up to camp and everything's great and people get along and and uh, you're you're cared for and you're having fun and you're in the present you know you're learning every day and worshiping every day and in the present and it's like this is amazing we wish we could stay here well that's what the disciples were saying that day this is amazing and Jesus says no our our faith in part is about coming to this place that we might get connected but then the proof of our faith is going down the mountain to live our faith. And as Jesus comes down the mountain, the first thing he does is he cures a boy who's been possessed with a demon. So he says, it's not up here. It's what we do down the mountain. And on the way down the mountain, there's a miracle healing that happens. So the question in Lent sometimes is, am I holding on to too much of that mountaintop high experience and just, just trying to go from mountaintop to mountaintop in my faith? which is really just a selfish way of saying it's just about me and how well I feel connected to God rather than going down in the valleys and up constantly in my faith to serve others, to love others, to live my faith, back up to get connected again, back down to serve others, to love others, to, to uh, uh, practice my faith up to the mountain again. Where are you on that journey now? And what is going to be important for you during Lent in order to make this ebb and flow actually work in your life. God bless you. Have a great day. Have a, a meaningful Ash Wednesday.